What's going on guys and welcome back to another MITX build. In this video we are going to be using the Meshroom Mini ITX case. It's a very modular style of case. It is also very versatile in how you are able to move parts around in order to accompany different hardware such as a bigger motherboard, bigger AIO, SSD etc. I've always wanted to try out this case. It's a full mesh design so all your panels are mesh allowing it to breathe a lot better. You're able to accompany an ATX power supply up to a 280 AIO and a three slot GPU up to about 335 millimeters. I'll clarify that anyway. This is everything we're going to be putting into this build. As you can see, we've got the Asus ROG Strix Z690 iGaming Wi-Fi motherboard. Now this is a DDR5 motherboard with all the bells and whistles, all the ports, type C, all that good stuff. And we are going to be pairing it with the i7-13700KF. To cool it, we've got the ROG Strix Ryujin 2 240 AIO. For the RAM, we've got the Alexa Aries DDR5 6432GB kit and we've also got the Alexa NM790 and to power all of this we've got the Silverstone SX1000 which is a 1000 watt SFXL platinum power supply that way we are able to power everything and still have headroom if you want to overclock and the star of the show is going to be the Zotac Gaming RTX 4070 Ti Super 16 gigabyte VRAM all of this put together is going to give us an amazing 1440p gaming experience and I'm very excited to actually put this together so without further ado let's jump into the build and let's see how well this comes out. All right, so here I've just gone ahead and removed everything that we need for this build. So these are all the parts that come with the motherboard. You've got your antenna, integrated cables, and this little device that plugs in via two type C's. And on it, you have your SATA port and your front panel cable, as well as speaker. Then you've got your two SATA cables. We're going to be using a corrector frame, there's our RAM, SSD, CPU. So we're going to install our CPU first, then our corrector frame. That way we minimize the chance of bending any pins. Grab your CPU, pay attention to your triangle on here, notches top and bottom. Align it with the markings of your motherboard. Ensure it's seated properly. Grab yourself a T20 Torx screwdriver. They also give you one, but that's just not a good tool. You want something with good grip. Remove these four Torx screws that secure the retainer. Remove it. Keep the screws as we are going to use them again. Remove two more Torx screws. And now remove your clamp. Grab your corrector frame and place it straight on top. I'll grab your four screws and install them. First, we're just going to get it on without even tightening it. We'll make sure all our screws sit in first. Then we can tighten it after. Now that we have it seated, we're just going to tighten it until it's snug all the way around. Once we feel it stop, we're not gonna go any further. And all we're using is two fingers, just your thumb and your pointy finger. What we're going to do now is install our SSD. If we install our RAM first, we're going to have trouble removing the heatsink of our M2. Let's remove these screws here. I've already loosened everything, but I'm gonna show you everything anyway. We remove these two screws and the top piece comes off. Next, you've got two screws here and here. I've already removed them. Once you remove that, you unclamp this FPC cable. You push down on your motherboard and work this out slowly. Sometimes it's a little bit tightly connected, but that's okay. Just give it a wiggle and work it out. Then you've got two more screws, one there and one there. Undo those and then lift this up. This is your first M2 slot. Remove your protective stickers. Grab your M2 SSD now. Line up your slot with your notch. Ensure your quick latch is all the way down. And then once you push it down, you push it all the way up. And you should see this gray part here secure the SSD down. So we installed it onto the bottom one because if we wanted to install another one, it's, we don't have to remove everything just to install it again. You can install it in the top slot. Line up your screw holes. Screw these in, just nice and snug. Then we reinstall our top SSD. We align this to the port here. This allows the connection between both M2s. So just push that straight down. Now you reinstall these two screws. One, just nice and snug, don't go too tight. Plug this FPC cable back in. Reinstall your top piece here. Align your two screws again and tighten it down. Let's install our RAM now, open our slots, align our notch here with the slot and align the RAM with the RAM slot. Just push it in and push it down until it clicks in. DDR5 RAM doesn't go both ways, you know, it can only go in one way, so do not confuse that. Right, so now that we have our motherboard ready to go, what we're going to do now is prepare our case and we'll get the motherboard straight in. This is the SSUPD Meshroom. This is the gray color. There is also a green and a black. 
It's a very simple case. Uh, you've got your power button here at the back and then you've just got two USB 3.2s at the front and then you've got your Type-C, that's it. Let's just take this apart and they give you all these parts here in this box. It's like a rear slot and then you've got all these other brackets if you wanted to install SFX power supply and just other stuff so that you're able to fit a thicker card as well. Go from three PCIe slots to four PCIe slots. There's just so much you can do with this case. Everything is just pushed in and clipped in via these tabs. All right, you see them on each part. So we'll just pull off the front, pull it straight off. Very easy to get into. Now we'll pull off the side and this side as well. Look how easy this entire case comes apart, guys. Now look at this, you have full access to the whole inside of the case. It also comes with a link up PCIe 4.0 riser cable, front panel cable. Here's your power switch cable by itself. There's no HDD LED, power LED, nothing like that. Let's just sit our motherboard straight in. Once you get the motherboard in, you've got plenty of room in order to install the hardware for your AIO or your CPU cooler. Line up our IO shield. Make sure it all sits in. The stands have a little part that protrudes and that's what your motherboard sits in. That allows the motherboard to sit perfectly in. Let's install our screws. ITX motherboards only take four screws, so. That is our motherboard securely in. Beautifully. In order to gain access to the back, we're going to remove these two um, removable panels and that obviously is for your fans. And these brackets are adjustable to suit whatever you're trying to install. 120 fans, 140 millimeter fans, whichever the case may be, you can adjust it to fit. Now, you can also fit an ATX power supply down the bottom here and still have everything fit in this PC case. That's the amazing thing about this case. It's so versatile, so modular. Firstly, let's install the riser cable while we can before everything gets plugged in and you run out of room. Push that straight in and lock that in. And it bends to the back here. So this is where your GPU is gonna go. So you have the full length of this to install a graphics card. You can put either a two or three slot GPU. Say for instance, we try to put in the 4070 Ti and it doesn't fit. You see how this has this spacer right here, the bar. If I wanted to install a thicker graphics card, what I'm going to need to do is remove this and also a few screws that hold this panel, this panel here in the middle, so that I can shift this over closer to this side. And that way, I'm able to install a thicker graphics card. I'm just going to see if the graphics card will fit. And if it does, then we're good. If not, we are going to have to adjust this center panel. All right, so I've just done a quick trial fit of the 4070 Ti Super Zota Gaming. And you know what, it fits very, very well. Now I'm gonna pull this card back out and we'll continue with the build. We are now going to prepare our AIO. I chose the 240 because you have a choice between a 240 or a 280 for this case. So let's get everything out ready to go. Two black fans here. And let's pull out our cooler. Let's grab our 1700 kit. Got our mount, screws, stand, splitter cable, 503 pin extension, and then we've got some adhesive strips. Thumb screws to mount the AIO. Our little hub here. This is gonna allow us to connect our fans, etc. That's pretty cool. The adhesive would be for this. This is going to sit on the front here. Our AIO is gonna go here, and then the tubing will run around and then onto the CPU. First thing, let's remove this top piece. So we'll remove that to make it easier to install. These are Noctua fans, so that's pretty great. For this, we're going to put the fans on the outside and then we're going to put the radiator on the inside. That way it's gonna draw in cool air and cool the entire PC. So the fans will have to sit on the outside. That's how we have to have our fans installed, just like that. Just make sure your direction of flow is the right way. So now let's install the fans onto the radiator. We've got a total of eight long screws, so that would be for this. And they've also given us washers as well, so we would use the washers with them. They grab your washer, put it through your screw, then just simply push it on through and screw it into your radiator. Do the same for the rest, rinse and repeat. I just like to install. Try not to guess where your screw holes are. You can see it briefly before you put it in. Now screw it down a little. That's our fans in. Put in the rest of the screws. With that ready, we can now install everything ready for our mount. So let's grab our 1700 mount, 1700 stands, and our four thumb screws. Everything else can go back into the bag. And now let's prepare our motherboard. So now we're gonna prepare our rear mount, adjust it accordingly when we put it in. Let's grab the back of this and we will install it. We'll check that out. Okay, so right now we've got it in just right. Next, we need to install our stands. You just grab your stands and you screw them in. Just because I can't get my fingers in there, I'm just gonna use a socket real quick. It's just gonna help me do it a lot easier. I'm just gonna use it to screw this down real quick. But that's our stand in. Now, we need to install 
be cooler. Now, as I stated earlier, I'm not happy with the way they've only got that little bit of thermal paste on there. It's just a little round circle, kind of like the standard LG A1700 air cooler. So I'm gonna take this off and apply my own strain onto the CPU. Now we'll apply a nice strip down the CPU. And we're using Arctic MX4 here. And as you can see, that's what I'm talking about right there. That's how much thermal paste I like to apply personally. And I like to do a line straight down the center because that's going to give the entire CPU coverage. All right, so now let's install our cooler. Now it shows that tubing should be on the bottom. So that's what we're going to do as well. And we'll just sit this straight on. Line up our thread hole and our stands. Here we are. Alright, so now I'm just going to tie it in the snap, slowly get it down snow until it's all the way down. So now I'm going to have to check the back to make sure that the rear backing plate is in fact on all the way. Okay, perfect. Keep this back around and we can tighten it down all the way now. Just going to make sure it lines up perfectly centered. Okay, just wait till it stops and that's it, they're not going anywhere. Perfect, and that's in now, so we can now put our floor in, just get this little bit of a way, that's how we're going to put this in. And we, okay, we'll see that's the best way we're going to get it in, so I'm going to do it like that, that way it stays flat as well. And now I'm going to have to redo the screws here, because I need the screws now to go through the panel, and then into this. Good thing is, we can remove this panel, put it onto this, and then install it, so that's what we're going to do. All right, so as you can see here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six screws that hold this panel in place. Undo it. That takes care of this side. This is also what you would remove if you were going to install a 280 on this instead of a 240. With that removed, we can now install it straight onto our AIO. So let's get it out, get our first bracket on like this. As you can see, it does line up perfectly with all our screw holes. We'll just remove it one by one and put it on. Just like this. Okay, let's get this on. So that's that side done. Now let's do the other side. Same deal. Mount this side on. Now we're going to have to adjust this. It does move left to right quite a bit. It's not like it's a perfect fit and the holes are exactly centered. So once we get this in, we'll know exactly how we're going to move it around. So. Okay, so it looks like if I loosen up this and push the bracket out more, it will fit just right. Loosen everything up. We'll see if we can get the bracket lined up. Push the bracket out as far as we can. Push it all the way out. If I get this to stay here, it should be great. All right, so now I'm also going to have to readjust all of these ones here. They are touching. I need to push the frame down more. Okay, that works. Right there. Okay, let's get a screw in. The uh, screws they have given us with the washers are kind of interfering with how it's all going to mount nicely. And in the end, I may only use a total of four mounting points. Okay, so I think that works out. I've got the frame as far out as possible as I can get it. Screw in all of these screws now. Right, so basically that's how it's going to sit. It does have two more screws here, which install here. But as you can see, this is the best way I can get it because of the screws here that protrude so much, they're not so flat. And the washers as well, they're in the way. So this is how I've got it. And it actually does work out pretty well. Turn this around now, force the washers down, and then just screw this in. And that's our AIO installed. So here I've just test fitted everything quickly just to make sure that it all works and it all boots together. Everything did boot up just fine. It's always a good idea to bench test everything because even if a part is brand new, it can also be faulty. And as you can see here, we are using the SFX power supply. This is your power switch at the back here. Just a simple button, very practical. Everything works and it has all your bare essentials. Let's get our power supply now. And we're going to need the bracket for it, which is this here. This is going to be for our power supply. Here's our power supply now. We've got all the cables that we need. And this is the bracket that's going to allow us to install it. Let's attach this first. Make sure all your holes line up. And let's uh, line up all our screws. I've just got it loosely on. Let's get this in now. 
You can see the power supply goes in there pretty good. Now we just line it up. You can see how this part here all lines up flush and our final screw goes inside here. Hold it in place so that we can get the screws in. Right, so with that in, let's now get some cables in. So let's get our CPU cable in and then plug straight in here. And that'll work just like that. Let's get our ATX in and plug these first. Just fits, I mean, that's crazy that it barely fits. So I'm just gonna plug it in and then I'll show you exactly how it's plugged in. Personally, I might use an extension cable, but let's just see how we go first. All right, and then we have this little device here, which I've already plugged the speaker into and the front panel cables. I'm just gonna plug this in. Now you gotta have these starter ports facing out. I'll show you guys anyway after it's in. All right, so as you can see here, we've got our ATX cable plugged in. All right, this is our little device with our SATA as well as 503 pin and our type C and front panel. We're going to line up these two type C ports here with the two type C that are sticking out in there. All right, so just in here, you see it's two type C ports, also got your USB 3.2 and another type C there. Just have to line them up and then push it in. There we go, now we're in. Just check to see to make sure your speaker cable is in fact in and then just push it down the back so it's out of the way. Tension on that ATX cable is so tight and I'm really considering getting at least a 10 centimeter extension, just something to help out with the length. And here is our SATA cable. We have a lot of length here for our GPU because we have all this room here at the back now. Our graphics card's gonna be here, but we're also gonna have a little bit of room around here. So let's take advantage of that now. We could probably get away with putting our port just down the bottom here, like that. This is the bottom, right? And that's the top. Let me just swing it around so you guys get a better idea of what you're looking at. So our fan cables can go into the hub there. Here's our 5 volt 3 pin, which also has to go into the hub as well. And here is our USB which we plug into here. This is what controls the screen. And then there's also a micro USB that comes off this and that plugs into this hub as well. It's very important that you get this hub installed. I think a good spot to put it will be right there. And you know what? You can still install a 2.5 inch SSD. So here I have another one terabyte. And these are just very good to have you know, as extra storage. Yeah, it's not as fast as an M2 SSD, but it definitely does the job. So at the very bottom here, you notice you've got one, two, three four screw holes. Now, because our hub's going to be on this side, you could also get away with installing one of these here as well, just like this. So you can put one SSD there and one SSD there. Look at that, that fits. Line up the screw holes and then we're gonna screw it in. All right, so here we have our SSD screws. You just need four of them. You're going to need these ones here that are a bit larger. Grab our screwdriver. Here we are, there are our ports here. Oh wow, that works. So here's our hub now, slide it on through. In. Just get it lined up. Here's our 5 volt 3 pin. There's our 5 volt 3 pin port, the white one you can see just there. So we'll just plug this in. It's good that we can uh, pull this out a little bit, plug it in a little bit better. There we go. That's plugged in now. Let's push it back in. And you know what? I don't think you really need to put anything to stick that down. You could just leave it the way it is because it has rubber at the bottom to stop it from moving around. This is our GPU cable, so we need this to be on the other side. So we don't want to tangle anything up. We want to just have a clean route. So notice how I'm going under the CPU cable here. And now I'm going to flip this around. That's our GPU cable coming through. It will go up like this and then plug into our graphics card however it needs to. Let's plug in some fan cable. Let's just lift it up a bit and plug in our fan. There's fan number one and fan number two. There you go, plugged in, ready to go. Just go straight down the side and you can't even see it on this side. It just goes over the top and plugs straight in. So I really did not expect this to work out this well. Now we still have the Type-C here and the USB 3.2, so let's plug that in. So there's a tab on that side, so make sure we plug this tab on that side. Make sure you do line it up first. Don't just push it in, because you can bend these pins so easily. There we go, we're in and just push. And now our Type-C and push that in. We'll tuck it in between like this so it hides a little bit better. And then we'll plug it into the 503 pin port that's there. It's gonna push this on first. This is how we're gonna have our cable, like that. And it fits just behind this here. It actually looks really good because you can still see everything. So that's gonna be great. And it's gonna shine through the mesh. This is our micro USB I was talking about earlier. This micro USB plugs into this port right here. So all we're going to do is route it through the other side, but then come through the bottom and plug straight in. And here's the cable here. And we'll pull it through and plug it straight in. Put back its slack. The cable, don't want that interfering. Okay, so that's how I'm gonna have it routed, straight up like that. Okay, let's start getting some zip ties around everything and see how it's going to look. Now, I don't really like the way this is um, just dangling around, so I'm gonna have to put something to cover this because that can short just from metal touching. Let's 
tuck that behind the power supply, that way you can't interfere with the GPU here. Okay, that works. Just gonna get this uh, 503 pin back in now. Everything's starting to look really good. Now, before we finish off, we're going to have to get a SATA cable in. We're going to need two straight edges. So, so that's it, that's what we want, two straight parts. And let's push one in first. And this is where it's gonna plug in, right there. So, plug in the SSD first, then put your power supply in. And feed my SATA cable in. Alright, work it out. Plug it in now, and then we get it back in. Be very careful, because uh, you can't have too much flex or you're going to break this. Right, so this is how I got the SSD in. It took a bit of fiddling, but it, it goes in and it works. So as you can see here, nothing's damaged. So what I'm gonna do here is now, just give this a little bit of a flex, not too much, just a little bit. Push it straight first, and then I'm gonna turn it like that. There we go, and we're in. And make sure everything else fits well before I do anything else. All of this has to go in really nicely. Make sure you don't break any of your pins and stuff like that. It's very important. Here's our SATA in. Here's our micro USB. In the end, it is an MITX build, so everything is very tight because you have barely any room. And this isn't exactly the biggest case, but it still fits everything. That's the cool part. I'm gonna plug in the SATA port here. There we go. The SATA port's in there now, right there. Guys, with 503 pin, it only goes in one way. Just make sure all the cables are inside. Tucked away. Make sure everything else is still plugged in. Ready for our GPU, perfect. All right, so now let's plug in our graphics card. All right, so as you guys saw earlier on, this is the GPU we are using, the Zotac Gaming Trinity Black Edition RTX 4070 Ti Super, 16 gigabyte. This really is a gorgeous GPU. Now don't mind that it still has plastic on it because this build is for somebody and I like to leave them the feeling of being able to do the peel because when you're spending this type of money you want to be able to experience what it's like when you unbox a PC and do things like the peel. So this lights up in RGB and according to the box it says Spectra on here so you might be able to use the Spectra software in order to control the RGB. It has a really nice backing plate, decent size, it is only a two slot so very different to the 4070 Ti previously because that was huge, it, it was three slots. Very compact, I do appreciate that. The Zotac have now started coming up with this kind of futuristic design. It really does look very nice, very unique indeed. Let's bring over our case and what we're going to do here is lay this down now. These zip ties were only put on so that we could tidy up the 16 pin cable because it was all over the place. Right, that locks it in, that opens it. Don't get confused with the slots here. That's only if you wanted to install a mini GPU. Now, because you see this riser cable being folded over like this, this is now going to be your slot and that's where your screws are going to sit for your GPU to hold it in place. In order to do this, what I'm going to do is plug it in first. All right, so let's plug in our 16 pin. Here we are, and that's the way I'm going to have it sitting. So the cable's gonna run in behind the backing plate and then come in and curve and plug in. That way there isn't much tension on the bend. Okay, so as you can see our GPU is lined up now inside there. So that's actually a lot better because now we can sit flush up against it. Let me push this in. All right, so actually that works out so much better. So now I know this is exactly how I need to have my GPU cable. We have to unplug that because we need to sort this out first. So that's how that's gonna work. So let's get a zip tie around here. So that's it. Cut these off. So I'm gonna plug in the graphics card again first and we'll see how it works out. And then we install it now, line it up. Push it down, lock it in. All right, that works out perfectly. Look at that. Now let's install our GPU screws here, just two of them, and uh, we're pretty much done. Yeah, seems to work just fine. We got this one in. And then there's actually one more right here. GPU installed. That is it sitting up right now. And then, because it needs to be a little bit more secured on this side, they give you this thumb screw, okay? And this thumb screw is supposed to go here to hold the, to help hold the graphics card slot in place. So you just install it on the back end, like this. And you just screw it down, like so. As you can see right there, you just screw it in, as you can see right there. Before we completely put everything back together, let's give it a good test run. Here's our front panel cables. This is our power cable at the back here. And let's plug it into our power switch, which is power SW. Just like that, turn it on. Plug in mouse and keyboard as well. Alright, so let's quickly install Windows. 
custom. Make sure we select our M2 SSD. Now Windows is just simply going to install. Right, so here I've just done a little quick benchmark using Unigen Heaven 4.0. Alright, I want to show you guys something else. So right now, I've got Unigen Heaven running in the background. You'll notice here that the fan isn't spinning for the PSU. Now, what you need to realize is some PSUs work in a way where only once it's under load and it heats up, only then will the fan spin. You'll see now, the minute I switch to the Unigen Heaven benchmark, like so, the fan spins straight away. If you put it under load and it doesn't spin, then you might have a problem there where the fan may be faulty. All right, so once this finishes installing, I'll show you guys how to set up this screen here. Once it's finished updating, you're gonna restart it. Let's see how fast this works. So when you've got a fresh version of Windows installed, no apps, no other rubbish, this is how fast it can boot. Honestly, in a matter of seconds. Just like that, you're already in Windows. That was less than 10 seconds, guys. Seriously. Then we'll go back into Armory Crate. This is your dashboard here, and as you can see, you can even overclock from here. AI overclock, see your CPU cores, and it shows everything here from your motherboard, your RAM, you can control your RGB as well. You can even control your fan speed. Now, we go to Devices, we select our AIO, and these are all the different screen images you can choose from. When you select it, you click Apply, and look at that. How cool is that? Or you can choose this one here, or simply upload your own file. Choose whatever file you want, and it will be displayed. Now, you can choose all these different ones. So you have banners, okay? There's a banner. There's another banner. You can even type text in here, so... And then you click apply, and then you see text up there. What we're going to do is choose hardware monitor. You can choose single, duo, triple, or quad, meaning you can display four sensors at one time. Let's try four. Choose dark theme or light theme. That's the light theme, and that's the dark theme. We'll apply it, then you get a background. And really, that's all there is to it. It doesn't get any easier than that, guys. It really doesn't. And you see the fan speed? See how we're choosing CPU fan speed? You can choose the pump speed. That's what you want, sorry. And then click apply. Now it gives you the fan speed on your pump. And that's what you're able to do with this AIO display screen. You don't have to download any third-party software. All you need is Armory Crate, and Armory Crate is great to have anyway because you're able to see all the information of your PC on the dashboard. All right, so now let's shut this down and let's finish off this build completely. One last thing as well. So you've got here HD LED, reset switch and power LED that are just bare. And you have all this metal here that you can touch in order to accidentally reset your PC. So what I'm going to do is just cut some heat shrink. I'm gonna cut three of them. And I'm just gonna put it around each one of those so that it can't accidentally short out for any reason. The reset one, mainly because if I just leave that bare, that could easily just reset it when I touch some metal. So just get a lighter here, get some heat around it, and just heat it around there, just so it stays on. Just like that. Now I don't have to worry about it resetting by accident. There we go. Right, so I've just hidden the front panel cables underneath here, so you don't really see it. It just looks a little bit better. And now I'm just going to tidy up the rest of the cables, and we are just about done. All done. And that pretty much is it. We are now fully complete with this build. You see how I've just hidden it underneath the CPU cable? That's kind of what I wanted anyway. And now let's just put all our panels back together and uh, power it on and see the final product. Initially, when we went to put in the graphics card, we had to remove these two bars, right? Because I wasn't able to get the card in unless I removed it. And this just sat in like this. And unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to put this back in in order to add case fans because there just isn't any room. I'm going to just have to leave them out. All we really have to do now is put the case back together or our spare screws that we don't use. Let's put back into the box. 
or our cables that we didn't end up using like our splitter and our nine pin splitter chuck back in this box and then there were the four screws that held this in put that in the box and check this out guys when i first saw this i was so worried that it wasn't going to work you see this um screen here it actually protrudes past this frame here when you look at it sideways just here you can see this is where the frame ends and this is where the screen ends. But when I went to test it, it, it fitted. Even though this does protrude a little bit, and I'm talking about at least four millimeters past the frame. When you push in the side panel, it actually sticks out a little bit due to the tabs that it has. I was very concerned that this wasn't going to work, but check this out. It actually fits perfectly. Look at that. There's no bulge, it's completely flush. And I like that you pretty much can see through it. It looks fantastic, it really does. So now we'll put on the other side, just line it up and then push it on. Like I really love the simplicity of this, how user friendly it is. And now for the top, so all you do is line up your box here and just push it straight on. That went straight back on, that's great. And lastly, our front panel. It goes on either way, it doesn't matter because all the tabs are symmetric. And that's it. And that, my friends, is the SSUPD Meshroom S Mini ITX PC case build. I mean, you have to admit that it really does look really, really nice. Now, let me just unplug some of these cables so I can show you guys better. So everything is working at the moment. As you can see there, we've got our monitor there. And it just looks really nice, guys. I mean, that's the side with um, our motherboard facing out. That's where you can see your CPU temperature and whatever you decide to display on there. And then you can also see the RAM shining through as well. And you know what guys, if you had RGB fans on the front, they would shine through as well. And it would really bring this whole build together. So that's why I am really contemplating changing the front fans to RGB. You see a little bit of RGB there, a little bit here. And of course, the star of the show, that little bit of blue from the GPU. I have to say that I really did enjoy building in this and I was really surprised at just how much you could fit in this tiny little box. This just goes to show that you don't need that big of a case in order to fit some amazing parts into an MITX PC case. And being all mesh, as I stated before, it's really going to allow this to breathe. So that's why I really wanted to do a build in this and do a decent build because I just think that putting together a PC like this is really going to help save all that desk space. This turned out really, really nice and I'm so happy with the way it came out. Not only are you able to fit the parts you want, but it also definitely breathes. And, you know, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And you know, would you build in a PC case like this? Um, what would you put in it? And what do you think of the build? Is it something you would go for? Do you think um, I should have went for a different type of uh, motherboard? Or, you know, should I have installed an air cooler instead of an AIO? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section and um, I'll be sure to reply. And if there is a specific case that you may want me to build in, then let me know. Um, I'm really into these ITX builds and I do have a few more that I plan to build and they're gonna be some pretty decent ones as well. So be sure to follow along. And well, that brings us to the end of this SSUPD Meshroom S Mini ITX PC case build. I really hope you found this video helpful guys and it gives you an idea of how you can go about building into this case. Now remember that there are so many different variations of how you can build in this case from using an ATX power supply, an ATX motherboard and even adding more to it to expand the case as well. You can even get a tempered glass panel for this. You can even get different color mesh panels and interchange it. There is just so much you can do. You can even get different size lengths of feet. Because you're able to accompany a larger graphics card, you can use a graphics card that is actually the entire length of the case. Have the legs help lift the case up enough so that it will not interfere with how the cable plugs in. If you're in the market for a extremely versatile case that you can do so much with, then be sure to check out the Meshroom S by SSUPD. It really is a case that is very fun to build in. And although it was difficult at times, in the end, you will get through it and it ends up looking amazing, just like it does right now. Until next time, guys, this is Mike with Mike's Vlogs, signing off. See you in the next one.